Welcome to the Practice Squad Podcast, episode 16. I am John. I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Mark, who unfortunately just had his uh, second year of coaching football um, come to a conclusion. But man, good ride for uh, for your season. I'm sure you're proud of the boys. Anything you want to say about it? Um, you know, tough. not how we wanted it to end, obviously. Um, unfortunately, in football, most of the time it, it ends um, – on a on a sadder note especially uh at the high school level but super proud of the kids and how they handled the success that they had in the last few years and also the losses they handled themselves uh, like true men and um was super fun ride and gonna gonna cherish those memories forever with those guys absolutely and uh yeah i was following along the best that i could um Man, it was definitely that that last uh, that last drive was nuts. So um, I'm sure you guys will come back just as strong next year, though. Um, for those that don't know, Adams football has been very competitive uh, the past few years, and you know are coached by a great group of guys, and um, you know always pretty much make every single team that they have uh, you know competitive and play really good football, uh, regardless of. Who the, who's on the roster and they have some great athletes on the roster the past couple of years as well. So, all right, moving on to NFL football. Um, Mark and I both went six and eight uh, as far as our predictions this past week. So uh, <laughs> we didn't do too hot. Um, can't even say that I picked better than him. Cause man, like, you know, at least going, you know, whatever seven and seven would have made me feel a little bit better. So at least I could brag. To Mark, I was supposed but... to catch up to you, John. Like last last week, you blew me out of the water. Right. I was supposed to do better, and you were supposed instead. To stay I just good. came instead down. To you your came level. down to my level. Uh, yeah, not good. Not good at all. I, however, I gotta say this was obviously an insane week, right? Um, you know, Bills taking a crazy loss to the Vikings, which we'll get into. Um, as well as Philly taking the very first loss of the season and a couple pretty tight margin games as well. So let me share my screen and we will get into it. A lot of shakeup, a lot of shakeup across the board. Lots and lots of shakeup. Okay, so first thing, your prediction was correct. Uh, Falcons and Panthers in the rematch. DJ Moore did not take off his helmet um, to lose them the game. So, you know, same teams playing each other twice within a three-week span. I probably should have uh, predicted that one. Um, so good on you for that. Um, overall, just another boring Thursday night football game. Um, I seriously, and I, I think he's maybe made some comments about it. Um, maybe not super direct ones, but I think Al Michaels is pretty bummed out about the football <laughs> that he has to commentate on. I we, will say the, the uniforms have been sweet. The uniforms, the uniforms have, been, nice, have cool. been sweet. And that's about um, the only good thing they got going. The the Bengals Miami color rush that happened what probably five weeks ago now when the whole yeah. that was the crazy two of concussion that was probably my favorite like uniform combination I have ever seen in my life the the, the all whites with the the teal blues so cool um, so yeah definitely not mad about the color rushes um. And the Panthers, I'd say, look looked super sweet this past week too. With the, love, yeah, that's that's what I want the Lions to do so bad with the all uh, blacks, the black. They have the blacked out look. Man, it's sad because they haven't done all blacks in I think well over a decade now, and it's it's been so long that they don't even really look cool. Like looking at the old pictures because like they still have like the jerseys that like basically yeah. go down to the elbows that are a lot more baggy and stuff like that. It just looks dated now. It doesn't even look good. So yeah, ho- hopefully we get some blacked out lines uh, jerseys at some point. That would be sweet. Um, all right, moving on to Seahawks bucks. So what's interesting about this game, very first NFL game ever played in Germany. Deutschland. That- Deutschland. Um, For those that don't know, uh, the stadium held about 65,000 people, and there were 3 million requests for tickets um, when the tickets were first available. Um, So we've commented on this a couple times. I don't know how you're not the NFL and you don't see that as just absolute buckets of money and want to expand that in future seasons. Um, That being said, Bucks played really good ball. You know, Tom Brady is now... 
two and O as a single man. So, you know, maybe he just needed his cryptocurrency endorsement to implode on him and his wife to leave him. And he's just back to his prior form. Um, they're, I think, leading uh, their division now, uh, which means they'll have a shot at the playoffs. And we all know that if Tom Brady makes it into the playoffs. It's anybody's game. So, I mean, you um, don't uh, you don't want to put gasoline on a, on a small fire, John. And uh, Giselle's already been seen on the dating scene with a new man. And it's been, I don't know, two weeks. So not a great look for her. Uh, I guess credit to her moving on pretty quickly. But um, if you're Tom Brady, and that's just extra motivation, man. That's, I mean, with everything else that's been going on football-wise, to have that going on. Right. And we yeah, don't know how long they've actually been separated for. Right. Obviously, they've only been divorced for a couple of weeks. But regardless, definitely uh, kind of a bad look. Um, hey, but the Bucks, 2-0. 2 and 0 and that's all that matters <laughs> winning cures everything right so, yeah no um, i mean i would want to bump into tom Brady, you know in an early playoff game no you know if i'm it, if i'm minnesota if i'm uh philly you know any of those higher ranked teams going to play i'm not i sure as hell don't want to see tom brady and uh, that might be a fact that remains true forever i don't care if he's 55 i probably still wouldn't want to see him in the playoffs i'd still yeah. be a little bit nervous so um Definitely interesting. Uh, you know, the Seahawks started off really strong. They're, they've fallen off a little bit, but they're still six and four. Um, they still look good. The Seahawks they do not still look, look bad. But um, what was previously a commanding lead in their division is now yeah. a one game lead. Um, I have plenty of thoughts about that 49ers game that we'll get to. But um, Geno Smith, John, uh, they're talking about paying the guy. They're talking about him being a long term solution. It's isn't he older? Isn't he like 34, yeah, 35? Yeah, he's been the league for like he's been in the league for like nine or ten years already. And um they're but they're talking about signing him in the off season to a legitimate deal. Because we talk about all the time how hard it is to find the right quarterback. And I don't know, you know. There's obviously plenty of better quarterbacks than Geno Smith, but the fact that he's earning a right to have that conversation, who would have saw that coming? You know? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think everybody kind of thought this was going to be a buffer year, load up on draft picks, kind of invest in the future. And uh, and Seahawks are playing good football with a whole lot of draft capital to work with um, in the future. So um, we've said it before, highway robbery. Um, Seahawks are probably going to be you know, nice and competitive in their division for uh foreseeable future. It was it was not a rebuild, it was a reload, as uh Pete Carroll said. Um Look at this game of the year, John. Yeah, I was about to say, I you know, we, we talked quite a bit about two just mediocre games, and now we have to talk about the most ridiculous game I think I've seen all season. Easily. Easily um, game of the year nominee. Um, yeah, and look, I gotta say this, I feel horrible because hey, it feels like Josh Allen's always on the losing side of these games. Most ridiculous circumstances you will see. And then it makes it to overtime. And Josh Allen, I believe, is 0-4 in overtime, believe it or not. So he's, he's listen, this game, you know, just to kind of recap the ending. If you weren't able to watch it, it's worth John was driving back, uh, <laughs> texting, and I was texting and just blowing up his phone. He's like, dude, like what are you, like what are you talking about? I'm not like I, I can't like watch the game right now. I'm just blowing up his phone, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my, like every. My, my favorite, thing that <laughs> my favorite thing was that I said, "Can you guys just explain what's going on?" And uh, Mark and Zach, who helps out a little bit with the show, both just said, "I literally can't explain to you what I'm watching." I literally, and I was like, in a text message. "I was like, come on, man!" And then I ended up watching the replay once I got home from my drive, and. I I can hardly describe what I witnessed. So it was the the the, the fourth down and 18 one-handed catch by Justin Jefferson easily goes down in some of the top catches I've ever seen. Better than Odell's one-handed grab, in my opinion. There's a lot of debate around it. You can make that argument. I'm gonna I'm gonna still say Odell's is better just because of the circumstances, but that was an unbelievable moment to extend the game. I mean, the game's over right there if he doesn't make that freakish play. Um, he has a couple more big catches just a minute later to get Huge them onto the one yard line. And then Kirk Cousins can't get him in from the quarterback sneak. I mean, I, and it didn't even look like he was really trying a very, very poor execution of the quarterback sneak. You should be able to get it in there from, from that, from that quarter of an inch, 
you know, that they had to move the ball. I mean, Kirk, we saw him last week how cut up he is with the chains on. Like, he should be able to cross right, the right. plane from that. But then, you know, you think Buffalo's won the game. They get a goal line stand. The crowd's going nuts. And then you would think Josh Allen, with his size and ability to move on a quarterback sneak, muffs the snap from under center. Vikings recover to score. Um, and then you think that's over. And then the Vikings are going crazy. And then Josh Allen rips your heart out, drives the field, and under a minute kicks a field goal. And all of a sudden you have overtime. And Josh Allen in overtime, they don't like each other very much. No. He loses, he loses the coin no. toss again. And you just hate to see, and you're like, oh, my God, the Vikings are going to drive down and score. He won't even get a chance. They hold no field goal. You think, oh, my God, he has a chance to prove himself. He's going to get his opportunity. There's no way they're stopping Josh Allen. He drives all the way down the field and forces a, a, a terrible throw. Um, and Patrick Peterson gets his second and, pick. And they game. were, if I'm not mistaken, they were in field goal range already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were well within field goal range. Um, and yeah, But they, just, weren't, they weren't playing a tie, you know? No, no, they were definitely playing to win there. There was only two minutes left anyways. Um, So if they they tied there, the Vikings probably would have gotten in field goal range and won it anyways. Um, But it was nuts. It was was one of the most ridiculous endings to a game I think I have ever seen in my life. Just the the probability of all of it, right? That's why you watch NFL football. Um, You know, I've gotten this debate with my dad, college versus NFL several times. You just... you do not see endings like that. I would say rarely see endings like that in college. I actually don't think that that many insane things can happen in that short of a time frame. The, the level of competition. Other... It, and I would say this. Stuff like that can happen at any level. You know, right. uh, We had a crazy ending in our high school game this past week. Like Crazy stuff can happen at all levels. But what I'll say about the NFL is the level of uh, talent and the team's um, depth you know, every single week, like any team versus any team can have an ending like you saw in, in this Bills game um, because everybody is so good and so talented that you, you see crazy things happen more often in the NFL just because of the equal talent level. But in college, yeah. I mean, we see some crazy endings as well, and especially in rivalry games and, and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, it just – I just feel like every year you see new ways, whether it's college, high school, pro, you, you see new ways that teams pull out wins. And like stuff that you can't even make up in your head until it happens. It's um, just absolutely insane. Yeah, you, know, you couldn't write the script of this game any better. Really, no. like if I typed up like a movie scene from a, for a football movie, like you know, and I'm like, hey, what's the most intense, crazy ending? They'd be like, uh, all right, let's write it up. I w- I wouldn't have thought of that. No, I mean seriously, the one hand to catch, the quarterback sneak fail, the uh, the another quarterback sneak fail that results in recovered fumble for a touchdown. The, the game tying drive, another field goal in overtime, driving with one of the best players in, in the world driving, and you think he's going to win the game, and he throws in a pick, just you know, just a terrible throw, just crazy stuff, man. It's it's insane, crazy stuff, Absolutely. and it's huge. Again, we talk about big swing in the uh, um, for rankings and for playoffs. I mean, Minnesota getting that win is ginormous considering the Eagles lost and. The Bills now, I mean, they went from controlling the AFC to, you know, they're third in their division. It, it, it's crazy. I mean, two losses in a row for Buffalo, and all of a sudden they're, I mean, they're going to have to Just the fact the that, that you're saying the Bills are third in their division right now is is so ridiculous. Um, it's, it's crazy. And the Jets are first now, right? The, the Jets are first. Yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, in Miami. In Miami. In Miami yeah. second. Right, yeah. And, then, and the Patriots, though, aren't far behind. Right. Well, uh, that division ended up being, like, the most competitive division. Right, we thought it would be. The AFC, maybe in the league. It's it's ridiculous, the parody. I mean, it really is. Um, moving on to another exciting ending. We got Lions-Bears. Um, look, all I got to say is two weeks ago, Peyton Manning uh, exercised the the curse of of Bobby Lane, uh, and Lions have won two games since then. So, you know, Mark, I think uh, three weeks ago I was like, "Oh, there's I'm definitely taking the ACT. There's no way that I'm not taking the ACT." You're still taking the ACT. I hate to break it to you, but we're we are three games out from me not having to take the ACT, and that's hope, Mark. 
uh, there wasn't hope before. There's a little bit of hope now. And I knowing mean, the Lions, they will probably get to five and then not get six and take that hope and just crush it right in front of me. Um, that's probably the most likely scenario to play out. But I will say one thing that, that makes me excited is their defensive perfor- performance has improved. Uh, they did not win this game unless their defense got stops in the fourth quarter, in which they did get several of them, as well as a pick six, um, which apparently is not credit to Okuda, but credit to Justin Fields throwing the ball like an idiot. <laughs> um, but then additionally, man, and I just got to say it, Aiden Hutchinson is not a bust in my opinion. He, I've seen what I need to see from him this season to not believe that he is a bust. Um, and he, gu- with- he, he guesses because, and you know, fans will see what they want to see. And he made some plays, but there are also some horrible plays. Uh, that he made in that game as well. He still has a ton of improvement that he needs to do in order to live up to what he needs to be. You know, he's having a good rookie year. Um, but like I said, I mean, he's going to be compared to the highest defensive picks in NFL history because he was the second overall pick. And he deserves to be held to that standard. And I wouldn't say that he's reached that standard by any means yet. He's having a good rookie year. He does a, There's a lot of mistakes on the, on the film as well, if you really look at it. Um, but Justin Fields, I'm going to give some credit to him, too, and the Bears, another team that no one saw anything coming. They looked really good, man. And he has become a legitimate threat to run the ball. The, the, the run where he scored um, and made Joseph miss and outran Okuda was one of the more impressive things I've seen anyone do in the NFL. It in was. Time. I mean, that was unbelievable. You, I mean, you see that's like a high school level type of run. He's making guys just look bad around him. Um, and I, I don't know where the Bears the, like offensive line came from the past couple of weeks too, because all of the sudden they have a run game. Like they have a run it's, game it's and... not just Fields too. Um, their their running backs are are playing pretty well as well. So I don't yeah. know. Like this previously, a... sorry, go ahead. No, this is an impressive win for like this is not a bad Bears team. Like this is a dangerous Bears team, and you know it's a it's a it's a good win for Detroit. Um, they were down fourteen you know, going in the fourth quarter and a couple swing plays and all of a sudden, you know, a missed extra point. And all of a sudden you're in it to win the game. Uh, Jared Goff impressed me. What he's been able to do with what he has is, you know, it's he's earning the right to to stay in Detroit as our quarterback. I, I really think he is. Uh, our at, at least is not a, not not a good, problem you know? area to address in this draft. That's at least how no. I view it. I, yeah. I don't think. I mean, it depends I, what pick you get, but. I don't even think it depends what pick you get. I don't think that uh, either quarterback is is worth that top pick if we get there, right? Yeah, I really don't. I don't so, I mean, Bryce, Bryce Young and, and Stroud are they're going to be um, all time prospects, I think, uh, in this year's draft. It, it just depends if he can get one of them. I think he might have to. It depends. It depends what pick they're going to end up getting. I mean, if they keep winning games. You know, and they do finish with four or five wins. It's probably going to actually hurt us in the long run. Um, yeah, well, you know, the Rams are in tank season, so we'll get their pick. It'll be fine. Um, but look, I think this is a valid point, and I'm not trying to be too much of a stooge here, but like, name a quarterback that is truly like an all time great quarterback that is not tall. And that's what I'm getting hung up on. Correct. Drew Brees. That's about it. It's the only and one Russell Wilson of. before he went to Denver. <laughs> okay, all right. I don't know if Russ, I would say, is is all time great, but like you think of all the like the prototypical stud quarterback. You're thinking right now, you know Herbert Allen, right? They're just they're tall, lengthy guys that can see over their offensive line. So I, I'm Tyler like, Murray when there's no Call of Duty out. That's that's the thing. I I cannot consider him a great quarterback. Not he's even not. close. He's average yeah. at best. I would take Lamar over Kyler any day of the week. I'd pay Lamar Kyler's contract any day of the week. Personally, I he's, well, he's going to get it. He's going to get. He's going to get even more than Kyler got. But I hope he does. I think he deserves it more than Kyler does, and I don't think he has a Call of Duty addiction. So yeah, you know. But John, I'll finish. I'll finish with this game with saying I wouldn't get your hopes up. Lions have won back-to-back games, but you have to remember they still only have two wins. Also, yeah. uh, if by some miracle the Lions do get seven wins this season, I finally have figured out you know what I want you to wear for the ACT. So I just want to document that just by in case by some miracle it does happen. As you know, I was trying to find like 
my old practice jersey because that would be even more stinky than than your central michigan jersey but that didn't really work out when i was like you know what actually i'm gonna put mark way out of his comfort zone and i'm gonna send you like one of the most like gruesome obnoxious death metal shirts that i can find and send you in that so that's what i'm gonna roll with um it's gonna make you look incredibly out of character you'd probably just be uncomfortable like you know walking around even with your family on the way to the act to take it i think that's that's the move i'm gonna go with you know it's still a part of me all all my metal music and and musician stuff i think it's a good fit i think it's on brand i think it works um all right moving on to jags kc i mean i'd say this game kind of went how we expected it to. I mean, Casey, I guess, could have scored a little bit more, but. Patrick Mahomes and, and their offense is clicking. And when that's the case, and it's usually been the case the last few years, they're a threat. They're a threat to win it all. It's just, it doesn't matter how bad or good their defense plays. If, if Patrick Mahomes can score on almost every possession, like they do, move the ball up and down the field, throw it, run it a little bit, uh, extend plays, the Chiefs are a dangerous team, and the Jags are not a bad team. I won't, you know, they they fight. They're in almost every game, um, but Kansas City is just too much to handle right now. And you know, Patrick Mahomes is right back in the MVP uh, conversation with Josh Allen kind of falling apart. And Tua, you know, you look at the next game. Tua has now become a MVP, um, one of the MVP conversation guys. And who would have thought that after missing some time? And he still has, he still leads the league in in um, some of the numbers that they're looking at in terms of quarterback uh, passing yards, yeah. passing touchdowns, stuff like that. So I think, and uh, I'm going to echo the same sentiment and kind of with the Dolphins and the 49ers as well. When your offense is so good and firing on all cylinders that you don't know who you know, what wide receiver is going to get targeted, which running back is going to get the ball, what play designs they're going to gravitate to. It is so difficult to game plan for. And, you know, with, with their receiver core, they don't have like a true wide receiver one. They just have four guys that are really good. And I think they've started, you know, a few different running backs throughout the season and they all get the job done as well. And it is just so difficult as a defensive coordinator to game plan for that because they give you an entirely different look every week. I mean, and I don't know how they do it. I don't know if they're just like hitting the books and memorizing that many plays or if Andy Reid is just that good at articulating what needs to happen from game to game. But their their offense is clicking like a well-oiled machine. It's super fun to watch just because you really don't know what you're going to get. They're incredibly unpredictable. When and I have similar John, things. To, yeah, to go ahead. Pig, to piggyback what you just said. Um, and kind of clear up what, what you're saying. And it's, you know, you talk about these offenses that, well, the Chiefs have done this for a few years, but you talk about Miami and what they've done right this year, the first year head coach, but an offensive genius. You know, that was a known thing when he took that job. Uh, you talk about the 49ers, right? Offensive genius and what they've been able to do the last few years, especially this year, having McCaffrey now with Debo and the weapons they have. A lot of it is they're doing the same thing on offense. It's, it's how they're able to do it. It's not, you said, memorizing plays. A little bit of that, but really they're just doing the same plays and making it look different. So, you know, they, they can play with you with how their formation is lined up. They can utilize motion and shifts to make you think something else is coming and then run the same thing that they want to run. And it works in the play-action passing game. It works in the, sh- you know, short uh, third down game. You, you get the matchups that you want to get. When you line up a certain way all week in film, You see, how does this defense line up to this? And if they do line up like this, which we think they're going to, here's how we want to utilize our matchups. If they put this guy on Debo, we like that matchup. If the McCaffrey has this guy lined up on him, we like that. If Mahomes goes into an open formation, how does the defense check? What what linebacker widens out to guard a a running back or Kelsey in the slot? So they look at this, and all week long, they have a very good idea of how a defense is going to react to certain things. And then they just utilize motion and, and stuff like that and shifts to make it way easier on the quarterback to see what's happening. Because when you do all that stuff, the defense can't lie. The defense wants to disguise what they're doing, confuse quarterbacks. But when you motion, when you shift, when you do all that stuff, it makes it a lot harder for a defense to toy with you. And now you're toying with the defense and you put yourself in a good position. And that's what those offenses, the best offenses we see in the league are doing. 
and they just make it's the same place. They just make it look different pre-snap and all of a sudden, but by the time you realize what's happening, it's too late. Right. You know, well, cause like with the 49ers, um, you know, Mitchell had most of the carries rather than McCaffrey, but by a yeah. huge margin. And, and the, like, to me, I see that and it's like, okay, McCaffrey just being on the field and being a decoy and being somebody you have to account for is opening up all these possibilities. It for the changes it, again. It changes what you, they, they know when they move McCaffrey here, this is what the defense is going to do likely. And if they do that, it's this. And if they don't do it, it's this. I mean, they have multiple play calls in every formation based on how the defense lines up. And these quarterbacks are so smart and the offensive play callers have gotten so smart and how they scheme. It, it becomes literally like, you know, you're, you're just playing Madden out there and whatever they give you, you have, you have the answer for. So mm-hmm. it's become really hard to stop these offenses when things are clicking and they're on the same page. And I mean, you see, when you have an offense like that, it's hard to beat them. And we're seeing it with Kansas City, Miami, you know, San Francisco. These offenses are high powered and the coaching is at a next level. And the quarterback relationship with those coaches and play callers are at a next level. And that's tough to stop. Absolutely. Um, Browns, Miami, you know, Browns started pretty strong this season and now they're falling apart. Deshaun Watson is officially practicing with them as of, I believe, this week now. And maybe so, make things worse too. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what the culture is like. Uh, you know how the, how the team responds to him being around. I, I, I mean, I really don't know. Uh, I just know that if I were his teammate, it would be a awkward situation. You know, it'd be like you're, I'm supposed to be, um, you know, doing everything I can to help you out, to support you, to grow my relationship with you. Like if I'm a receiver for Sean Watson. And I'm doing everything I can to try to build chemistry. And it's just like, it would be tough, man, because I mean, like there's chemistry is so important in this. The skeletons sport. are in the closet, man. Like, right. you know, and, and you can't undo what's, what's happened. And, you know, and you think all those teammates know what's actually gone down and the accusations, whether they're true or false. Like, it's just like, it's not a good situation, man. And, you know, it's not going to go away. Um, so I don't know. I think this might even make them worse bringing him around. And, like you said, they started off, they've competed in most of their games. Even in this game, they competed for a little while. Right. I mean, just, just think of the chemistry issues, even when you were playing of like teammates that maybe partied a little too much or something like that. Yeah, and like, like small the, stuff. the small stuff in comparison to the, the stuff that Watson has been accused and, you know, probably is guilty of doing. Um, and so it's, I don't know how you overcome that as the, you know, the other athletes in that locker room truly. And I do think that it's not going to make the situation any better. And again, it's very on brand for the uh, Browns. So I don't really care. Um, <laughs> it's, I mean, like you guys, you guys had something going, you guys were a playoff team and then you're like, eh, let's, let's shoot ourselves in the foot. That sounds like that'd be a good sign. So Dude, shoot, shoot yourselves in the head. I mean, that's what, they, that's what they're doing. Like seriously, they... <laughs> it's 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 embarrassing. Yeah. Um, Giants come away with the win with the Texans. I mean, for a one seven and one team, I gotta be impressed with just the Texans kind of hanging in there against. You know, they've played a lot of really good competition every game the past few weeks. They, yes, they've really competed in every game. And um, shout out to our former guests, Troy Harrison and Khalil Pimpleton. We're hanging out before the game, after the game, got some. Uh, jersey swap and um you know we're able to get some pictures before the game that's got to be such a cool thing for those guys and it was so cool to have them on and and now they're you know they played against each other um troy is also up for pro bowl nomination i don't know if you've seen that john so if you guys are out there voting for pro bowl troy harrison fullback uh of the texans is is on that uh, list of guys you can vote for um which is awesome as a rookie undrafted rookie to even being a Pro Bowl conversation is awesome. So, yeah, I mean, and he is crushing it too. He is, you know, you might not see it in, in carries and things like that, but like if you watch the Texans play, he is a critical part of that offense. He's I mean, a huge he, reason, huge he's, reason why that running game is successful. Absolutely. And, and Pierce is having an awesome year and give credit to him as well. But, you know, without, without his bash bro, Troy, um, you know, it's not as Bash, easy. Bro. Right? You got you got You got Troy Harrison leading the way for you. Um, you know, kicking ass like 
I, I would want to follow that guy if I'm carrying the ball, you know? So Yeah, I mean, awesome he can, he can just crack freaking anybody. And the Giants, man, the Giants, like KP said on, on our last episode, the culture, they, they believe that they can win every game they're in. Um, there's a confidence to them, that, and they just play for each other. It's an unselfish thing. And like he said, man, you see it. And this is a first-year head coach leading these Giants, you know, and, and it just is a constant reminder, too, for people, for teams that are on down years that maybe are going to have a new coach next year. Like, it, it can really turn around in a snap of, of a season, man. Even even a few games. I mean, look at Detroit, right? Like, they've won back-to-back games. No one saw that coming. And, you know, does it give some people hope? I'm sure. I'm sure some people have probably switched their narrative on, on Dan Campbell. So, I haven't. But, like, there's – yeah, it can I'm, I'm still so plenty. Fast. I'm still plenty skeptical, but one thing that is great to see is that, and I said this uh, with the Green Bay win too, like their young defensive talent is what was keeping them in those games, and that's just exciting to see. Um, you know, feels like you you can build towards something for the future. Yeah. Um, speaking of teams that I'm very concerned about their future with, uh, the Saints looked horrible this game. Again, I would much rather see Taysom Hill be the starting quarterback than Andy Dalton. I can't handle it anymore. He is horrible. I don't understand why they're still playing this guy. It's driving me nuts. Um, And like this team, right? The Saints team, because they've had quarterback issues in the past, you know, with Breeze getting hurt and Michael Thomas being out and like kind of a decimated receiving core last year. And like I could still rely on them to get wins against teams like this because their defense was so rock solid that they would keep them in the game. And then Peyton scheming can make even the worst of offenses figure out how to score at least enough points to win the game. And we're not seeing that anymore, right? And it's incredibly frustrating to watch. I don't even know if I'm like want to be incredibly upset with with uh, Dennis Allen, but I also and. I know that they do incredible salary cap gymnastics to make it work every single year, but I just think like losing CJ Gardner Johnson, like just a lot of other things that happened throughout this off season, you know, swinging big on um, free agents that you probably didn't need to get like Tyron Matthew, whose impact has been kind of minimal this entire season. Um, It's just frustrating as, as a Saints fan. And I honestly feel like there's more promise with, with the Lions future and the way that their management has set them up and the way that they're sitting with their draft picks versus the Saints, who are probably going to keep making the big same mistakes of just doing salary cap gymnastics to sign these big names and then not really filling in the gaps where they need to to actually get wins. So I'm hoping they can figure it out. Um, you know, I haven't completely lost the long term faith yet, but first of all, they need to get their quarterback situation figured out, which we know is very difficult to do. And then on top of that, they need to get their salary cap situation and you know, a, a spot where you don't have to trade away some young, incredible defensive talent and you can keep them on the roster. So that's kind of where I'm at with the Saints right now. The Saints are, yeah, they're in a tough place, John. I think you give some credit, too, to Pittsburgh, who another one of these teams that no one really had high expectations for. But when you have Mike Tomlin as your leader, uh, Mike Tomlin, has, after this week, has now beat all 31 other teams in the NFL. He's beaten at least one time which not many coaches can say that they've done that um he's a winner and like he's going to surround himself with just tough dudes and he's going to get the most out of whoever he has and they play tough nose defense no matter who's on the field getting tj watt back sure as hell didn't hurt um but this is this is a big win for pittsburgh and and kind of you know just showing that they can still fight and they can still compete and the saints like you said just struggling and you know, I know you'd say you'd rather see Taysom Hill. I just don't know. Um, when, when Taysom Hill's playing solely quarterback for the entirety of the game, he has he's been very up and down. At and least I know what I'm getting, right? I'm getting a yeah. weak arm, but the most effort that you'll ever see out of anybody on this planet. <laughs> so it's That's like true. he will he will play hard. But yeah, I mean, you just have a tough quarterback situation there. And the pieces that you thought would help you aren't, you know, Kamara hasn't done much. I mean, they're. They're not trying to lean on him at all. They're not leaning on the guys they need to lean on. You know, they're mm-hmm. just they're just going out there and just doing whatever they want to do on offense. It's like you you need to help your quarterback out. You need to get a running game going. You need to have some easy throws. Um, and they just they just think Andy Dalton can just go back there and win you games. That's just not the case. You know, right? That's just not the kind of player he is. It's not the kind of player Jameis is or Taysom Hill. So absolutely, you have to find other ways to win, and they're not doing that. Right. Um. 
we predicted Broncos and Titans perfectly. Um, snooze fest of a game, very low snooze scoring. Fest. Just and neither offense could really get anything going, but the Titans do come away with a win. Um, so that's really I all I got. I saw a stat, John. I saw a stat I'd like to share. If, if the Broncos have just would have just scored 18 points in all of their games, they'd be eight and one. I did see that. And their defense is no joke, man. uh, I saw this like matrix about, you know, passing yards and rushing yards allowed, and they are in their own league as far as uh, their defense. They're playing really good defense. And who would have thought that, you know, Russell Wilson and this team just can't, they can't get it done. They cannot score points. 18 points in the NFL is not a lot, you know. That is nothing in the NFL. I mean, you you look at these scores Even if they score 18 in half those games, (laughs) in half those games, they're probably atop the division. They're right there with the Chiefs, you know, and they'd be at least second with how the Chargers and the Raiders have been let down. So this is just unbelievable to me. And, you know, you go back to us bringing Danny on and a Broncos diehard. And him, him saying that he still has the hope. And it's like, we kind of called it, but he had this, like, hey, I'm not going to give up yet. I mean, I wonder what Broncos fans are truly thinking right now, because this is about as big of a letdown as there is in the league right now. Because oh, absolutely. Russell so Wilson, much hype going into the season. So much hype. Game. And rightfully so. I mean, Russell Wilson was a superstar in Seattle for a long time. And you thought he was going to bring that air raid, big arm, scrambling, making plays with the receivers they have that are deep vertical threat guys like Judy and KJ Hamler and Sutton. And they're just not able to just score points and they have good running backs. And, you know, they thought they had a good coach hire. This is bad. I mean, it is, it is really bad in Denver and it's a shame. And I don't know, you know, I think it's hilarious to see Russell Wilson struggle. I know you do, but it's it's it is really funny. I'm not gonna lie, but it is also sad. And Every look, I feel like, I feel bad for Denver fans. Like I really, as much as I poke fun at Russell Wilson and probably Denver's management, like I do yeah. feel horrible for Denver. I mean, every the the post game, like, there's no that way out. Talk, Seeing Russell Wilson have to answer the same question every week is just hilarious. And know? then him going like back to his like cartoon character persona every time too, where it's like this dude literally wants to say "Let's ride" to end any conversation he has. Yeah, with the media. He, fl- he flips he flips the narrative in like every press conference, and like he just is like he makes it some lesson, right? Like you know, when you're down, you got it. You got to look up, right? Things can only go up. It, like all these stupid cliche things that he's just like pulling out of thin air every week because they lose every week. And they ask the same question. He's like, well, I got to answer it different. And then I got to finish with the let's ride and keep these guys, you know, <laughs> right. keep everyone hopeful. Why is your so, offense not scoring points? I don't know. Let's ride. Like that's yeah, basically, like, what, that's basically what he's saying. <laughs> Yeah, um, you got as paid as... a lot of uh, money to come here, and we traded away like all of our draft picks for you to do it. Do you have any like answer as to why you were the least efficient offense in the league? I don't know. Let's ride. Let's ride. Yeah, just put let's <laughs> ride at the end of everything, and it sounds good. You know, right? Um, like like doctors could be like, hey, unfortunately you have cancer and it's terminal, but let's ride. <laughs> like that's what, like that's what they'd say. Like if Russell Wilson as a doctor, that's how he would deliver the news to a sick patient who's dying. Right. And he'd make it about himself some way or another. Too, yeah, so. they, it's just like he would just be, oh, you know. Oh, God. Um, all right. I do owe an apology to a certain person because uh, it's not really his fault that he got the call to take this. And if I got the call to be an NFL head coach, I probably would say yes, regardless of my experience as well. Um, Jeff, Jeff Saturday came in. Uh, with a lot of people very upset that he had his job, including Mark and I. Um, and I still think that, you know, the meritocracy aspect of it does matter a lot in this league. And I do think it's a slight. However, this sport and this league is all about winning. And as long as you can do that, nobody gives a shit. And uh, Jeff Saturday is now 1-0 as a head coach, um, taking it to a Raiders team that we have said time and time again is really talented and a Colts team that has been horrible all season, and they still won that game. So, um, look, I mean, I definitely still have my doubts about Jeff Saturday. I still have a lot of the same opinions that I had last week. But, again, winning's all that matters, and so far he's won to know. So, shout out yeah, to him. Impressive I'm with win. you, John. And, and the more I've thought about it, too, I mean, last week we were pretty hard on him in Indianapolis for that hire. 
And, you know, there's still a lot you could say about it, but you're right. At the end of the day, um, you know, I loved his press conference and, and where, in which he addressed all of this. And it's so weird, you know, a, a, a Hall of Fame player gets an opportunity to come in as a head coach and kind of a, you know, something we haven't seen that we really haven't seen something like that happen before in the league where a, a player with no coaching experience just kind of gets hired into a role that large. Um and he, obviously he was getting a lot of slight for it. And he, he addressed it and just, he was like, I'm going to, he's like, I'm going to attack this. Like I attacked everything my whole life. And he goes, I might not be very good at it, but I, you know, I'm going to come out with high energy and give the very best I have to try and do the best job that I can. And he goes, and that's one thing, you know, you're going to get with me. And he's like, and that's what Jim Irsay knew he was going to get with me when he called me and, and brought me in for the head coach, you know, in the room head coach. And so I think he answered that really well. Um, and then obviously they come out and back it up with a win in vegas against a good raiders team the record is not portray how how they are they are a dangerous raiders team that can beat any team in the league on any day uh, but pretty soon we have to start calling him jeff sunday because you know he won a lot of games on sunday in his career and he's one and oh as a coach now so i think sunday yeah. might be his day look and i would feel like such a badass like being like tweet it just you know sitting on the couch one day tweeting out raiders look terrible and then just going off of that couch, getting hired as a head coach, and then on a week's preparation, going and beating them like that's got to feel super sick. I would, I would feel very cool after that win. For and sure. on the flip, on the flip coin <laughs> side of that, like if you're the Raiders, that is a demoralizing. Like you just lost the <laughs> team that so you lost the team at home who fired their coach six days ago and hired a dude who's never coached football. And, and was tweeting saying like, oh, yeah. I could beat this team myself yeah, I mean, from his couch saw, a week You saw Derek Carr's press conference. And, you know, unfortunately, I actually like Derek Carr. And I think he's a more likable guy than a lot of guys in the league. And he, he does, like, even one of the nicest people, like, he's even starting to, like, throw people under the bus. He was crying in his press conference. You know, this is a guy you don't it's, see it's, getting angry it's very often. And, he's been so resilient through so much garbage as the Raiders quarterback and has put together like some pretty impressive seasons, all things considered. And uh, I agree. And man, uh, like, again, you know, not to like play devil's advocate here, but you know, they're slated to have, you know, one of the top picks. Um, they might draft a quarterback with that pick. And it's like, man, Devonte coming to, to Las Vegas to play with his former college roommate and best friend. And like, are they going to move off of him this next year? And how is that going to affect the Devante situation? Like it's, it's crazy. And I, I, even more than my inability to predict how this Bronco season was going to turn out this year, I have the exact same sentiments about the Raiders season. And, you know, we don't give them the same shit that we give the Broncos because the Raiders can actually score points, but they're, they're still two and seven. They have a worse record than the Broncos, and it is just nuts to see. I would have not predicted that in a million years this yeah, season. Yeah, that was that that's one of the that's one of the more you know unpredictable things we've seen for sure. And and again, you know, is it on Derek Carr? I wouldn't say he's really the problem, but you know, you're always going to quarterback is going to take the responsibility, whether it's good or bad situations. It's just how it is. It's how the sport is set up. Coaches and quarterbacks are going to take most of the heat uh, when things go wrong. And when things go right, you get most of the credit. That's just how it's set up. Um, and it's unfortunate. He's in a terrible situation with a pretty talented roster that just is not getting it done. Um, I should have kept uh, Richie Bisaccia. Period. Yeah, you said it a million times, dude, and I, I mean, it, you can hard to argue that you're wrong about that. Um, he, he lit a fire into those guys. He, 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 those guys wanted to play for him for sure. Um, and we've seen this happen um, in the past. You know, with who they hired, he struggled in Denver when he was first there. He's, you know, he struggled in his head coaching situation before, um, and this is a really bad start. But you know, we we. we we just have to kind of wait and see. I don't know if they're going to fire him. I think they're going to give him another year. And I think they probably keep Derek Carr for another year before they, you know, give someone else a chance. And who knows? They could write the ship next year. Right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. Um, I'm, I'm sure that they can, you know, probably put something together next season. But it looks a lot rockier than you expected it to, for <laughs> sure. Um, moving on to Green Bay Cowboys. Um Look, th this was a huge win for the Packers. Uh, it gives them a little bit of hope. Um, 
and it was not an easy win, right? They were same thing with the the Lions Bears. I mean, the Packers were were down two scores uh, late in the game, and they were able to put it together, make it to overtime, get that win. You know, kind of what you'd expect to see from the Packers any other given season, but you know they've been really struggling, five game losing streak. Um, so huge for them. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know. McCarthy's coaching, uh, handing Green Bay a win. So there you go. <laughs> the, I'll say the thing that excites Packers fans or should excite Packers fans is we finally saw his young receivers and the chemistry with Rodgers start to develop. And we saw Watson have a big day. And, you know, we saw Sammy Watkins start to make some plays and Lazard was back in the mix. And we started to see the Aaron Rodgers that we're used to seeing because the receivers were in the right spot. They finished catches. Um, you know, they made the right play calls. Rodgers made the right throws. And, like, you're, we started to see what you were used to seeing in Green Bay for a long time. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers said it best after the after the game. He said, we ain't dead yet. You know? And, again, a dangerous team that if they find a way to get in, I wouldn't want to see. <laughs> you know? Like, it's just – that's – and I, we've said that, and, and they lost all these games in a row, but if they're able to just kind of get some momentum going, I mean, again, they they have a little bit of an easier schedule than most teams. And, you know, it's, again, it's a team beating the Cowboys, who are one of the better teams in the NFC, is impressive. And you have to give them the credit that they deserve. I know they lost to Detroit last week, but, you know, you're as good as your last game. And this last game was impressive. And I'm not going to completely give up on Green Bay in terms of, you know, making the playoffs potentially and being a dangerous team. Yeah, and they have a much harder road ahead of them to get to that point than even Tampa does, for example. Yeah, um, for sure. they're, they have no shot to win the division at this point, and they have to win a lot of games, uh, you know, in order to even potentially be in that situation. But you are right that there is a possibility they can still make it to the playoffs, and Aaron Rodgers is your quarterback, so we'll see what the rest of the season holds. Um, Oh, a team I'm not feeling as good about are uh, the Rams, which, by the way, uh, backup quarterback bowl, so that's fun. But uh, well, double backup quarterback in Arizona with two guys <laughs> right. going down, and then Cooper Cup also getting hurt. So yeah, which sucks, by the way. And he was the only thing giving me hope in my uh, other fantasy league. Um, and now he's on IR, so uh, I can kiss any hope of making the playoffs in that week. Goodbye, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, rough game for the Rams. Um, just as a Lions fan, and I've been saying this week over week, real excited about our draft pick situation with the Rams. So, you know, keep on tanking, baby. I don't care. Yeah, every, um, and the, I love watching the Rams lose. I really do. I, it's... It, it was so weird because I was... So excited for Stafford last season, and I really like watching them win. And then this year, like going into the season, I thought they were going to be good, but I was like, "Look, Stafford got a Super Bowl, like absolute menace." I think everybody thought they were going to be good, yeah. But yeah, I I thought I thought they were going to be a great team, but no, they're a letdown, and I'm stoked about it because it's good for Detroit. So it's really good for Detroit and Arizona. Like just Kingsbury, just staying alive, you know, just surviving as a head coach, like. He's he's one bad loss away from him getting the call, and I mean, just it's unbelievable. You know, right when you think that they're gonna lose in the away game to to LA and it'll be all said and done, he pulls this one off, and you know he's bought himself another week. But it's right. just crazy, you know how that um, works. Really excited about that 49ers win. Um, I know the Chargers are banged up, and I said this when I when I said I thought they were gonna win this week. But man, like this is kind of where they turn a corner every single year, right? I start a little rocky, you know, they're they're not like super in it to start the season. They're like a little bit under 500. And then like just five and four seems to be that record where it's like, all right, and now we're going to go and win a bunch of games. And like this Chargers team is super good, super explosive, good defense and uh, 49ers make it happen in a bunch of new and creative ways. And we already touched on it a bit, but like they don't even need to utilize their weapons. They just need to make sure they're playing the proper distraction games with them and then giving it to whoever else on the field needs to make plays. And they're healthy and uh, Jimmy G is a stud. 
I don't know what they're going to have to do about the Trey Lance situation because I just think Jimmy G's the guy there. I don't, I don't know what you, see, do. you did see, you know, you say Jimmy G's a stud and I, he is, but just like, he didn't, he didn't throw a touchdown again. And he's like, I think he's like eight and one or nine and one now in games where he doesn't throw a touchdown. That's, but like, that's the thing is <laughs> that the this, ultimate manager. He's a exactly game manager. all he's he like, does is read defenses and figure out where the ball's got to go. And he yes. makes a few mistakes. He makes a few exactly. mistakes. He understands the strength of his team is their defense, their running game. And, you know, they just survive these types of games. And that's why they're so dangerous, like you said, in this time of the year where they get in these competitive games and they're just so hard to force them to make mistakes that are going to cost them a game. They don't give you games. You have to earn it against San Francisco anytime you play them. They're not going to hand you a win. Um, and they showed it in this one. And, and like you said, the Chargers are a dangerous team. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell them yet. They're banged up. Um, the, the Chargers are a team that has the talent to do it. Absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. And they, they're, they're right there. And you got to be frustrated if you're a Chargers fan, because, you know, you did go all in a little bit this off season. I mean, you, you did similar to what the Rams did last year. I mean, you went and got some key pieces and those guys have been banged up and some guys have, have been, you know, ruled out of games and, you know, but there are they're just a few guys away a few get, of getting those guys back or a few guys stepping up their game to being a really dangerous team. Um, so, you know, this was a good game. These are two really good teams that uh, definitely we can see down the road making runs. In the Absolutely. Playoffs. Um, and then, you know, kind of the, the big talk of the town, especially we record on Tuesday. So this just happened yesterday. But the Eagles finally took their first loss to the Washington Commanders. Who and we've t- we've touched we've touched on this though. This team looks entirely different with Taylor Heineke at the helm. And- How can it not, dude? You go from the deer, you go from the hunter, uh, kind of hillbilly Carson Wentz, you know, man of God, kind of a little bit corny, almost like Russell Wilson. And there's there's times that works, but there's times where that just is not a good culture fit. And then you go from to Heineke, who slugs beers after wins, and you know wears a different pair of Jordans with the team that he beats colors on every single week. Like that guy is a guy I'm, I want, you know, playing quarterback for me. You know, and like I, I thought it was so weird to make the move for Carson Wentz this past season because I thought Heineke played great last season. I, right? Heineke's looked good just in, in almost every game he's played in. You know, he 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 makes some stupid throws. And he does some stuff. You're like, what in the world is he thinking there? But he also just is like a comp. He, he he's going to compete, right? He's a competitor and he's a competition guy. And if there's a if there's a challenge, he wants that challenge. He's going to give it his all, and he's going to make some impressive plays. Some of the throws he made down the field to Scary Terry McLaurin were unbelievable. And Scary Terry, <laughs> like just it. some of the stuff that he was able to do in this game, and there was some bad, but he has put this team in positions to win and given this offense kind of a new life because the defense has always been good in Washington. I mean, Ron Rivera, he's one of the best defensive minds in the league. That's not been their problem. They played clean defense and then Carson Wentz has just been so bad that they lost all oh, these yeah. games. He sits there and just holds onto the ball, just waiting to get oh, sacked. My God. And he, I mean, and he's, yeah, he, he's talk about giving teams wins. That's what that dude does. He oh, hands absolutely. the game away. Absolutely. And Heineke just, you know, he, he makes some stupid mistakes for sure, but he fights to the very end. And, you know, I mean, Washington is <laughs> like, what is happening? You know, like the, just this, how, how just a quick change like that can change and alter the course of where your team's going and in, in the season the direction. It's, it's crazy. Um, And additionally, like, I know the, the late hit call was controversial, but I don't know why it's controversial. Cause like he was like seven yards away from Taylor when he took a knee there and like, yeah, it sucks. Like that's not a fun way to watch a game like that end, but like it was a penalty. I don't think there's any debate on whether or not that was a late hit. It totally yeah. was. So yeah, the score is misleading. If you didn't watch this game, I mean, it was a one score game. And then, um, you know, this late hit happened that John's referring to gives them the first down. They still weren't able to score. Philly had a chance and their defense, you know, I'm just kind of like lateraling it. The Washington score on the last play of the game. Yeah. I'm just right. like, a, you know, a lateral play that they were trying to make some magic happen. So the score was much closer than this looks. Um, the Eagles kind of, you know, they, they didn't look great. They weren't able to do some of the things that they normally been able to do. One thing that they did do is their defense did actually play pretty well. 
for most of the game. Um, yeah, you know who's leading the league in interceptions now? Yeah, well, he's had he's had six straight games with one. So yeah, um, so That's no, the, the Saints should have traded that guy away for a fourth and fifth round pick for sure. That that totally made sense. So it's awesome, dude. He's um, in the defensive MVP. I mean, he has yeah. six straight games of a pick. That's so hard to do. And I was so upset when that trade happened and I didn't totally get it. And this season has done nothing but confirm that. So yeah. very frustrating. But uh, yeah, the, the Eagles We're definitely We're not going to have... see a perfect season, John. We're not going to see it this year. Yeah, which is unfortunate. But um, at the same time, I, I still think the Eagles are a wagon. Uh, they they play good ball. Their defense is great. Their offense sputtered a little bit. But, uh, you know... The, They'll be fine. They'll be just fine. And I do think they will win a playoff game, even though Mark does not. So, um, <laughs> anywho, moving on to next week's predictions. Oh, that's my Canva set up for each week. All right, here we go. So, we got Titans at Green Bay. Um, you know, with this game, I'm going to have to go Green Bay just because of the performance that they had uh, this past week. I And it's like a must win kind of situation, right? If you, if you want to make the playoffs, you got to get going right now. So I'm going to go Green Bay here. I'm also going to go Green Bay. Um, I just, you know, this is the time of year in Green Bay where it's hard to win there. A little snow, a little Lambo, you know, magic with the cold weather, Rogers turtleneck. Um, I, I think that oh, if you see the fun. turtleneck, it's over. Period. Yeah, you know, that's coming out. It's going to be a nice cold one. So I'm going to go with Green Bay and just. You know, I'd like to see Green, Green Bay kind of turn it around because I think yeah. it would be it would be fun to see them. In the totally. Um, Bears at Falcons. I think the Bears are due for a win based off of just they've put on some very good performances the past few games and haven't come away with it. This Atlanta team is nothing special. Um, so I think I think the Bears come away with this one. I'm actually going to go with Atlanta. Um, the Fields has looked really good the last two weeks, no doubt about it. And the Bears' defense has actually stepped it up a little bit, but they struggle really heavily on third down. They cannot get off the field on third down. The Lions, I mean, it was like every time they had the Lions in third and long and, you know, they, they would give up a first down. It's just you can't have that kind of, you know, lapse on defense over and over again. I'm going to go with Atlanta. I think they clean it up. You know, people forget this Atlanta team has has won some games they're not supposed to win. This is in Atlanta, I think they get back on the right track with a win. Panthers at Ravens. I will be going to this game uh, with one of my buddies who's a, a big Ravens fan. Um, I'm excited. Uh, that will be the first time I've seen the Ravens play. Um, and I think the Ravens are going to win this game. Uh, we picked this game exclusively because we thought the Ravens were going to win this one. And, and the weekend's kind of lined up. So you you um, have to, John, you have to provide some, um, you know, some firsthand content. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you you'll gotta, see it you gotta, on the practice squad pod socials. Yes. You'll, we yep. got to see some live in action. Uh, I, I want to see some live reactions from you, and uh, we'll get it on the social media this, this weekend. But uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens as well and support and hope that you get to see them win. Um, you, you know, you get to see Lamar action Jackson live, baby. So Yeah, it's, it's going to be uh, exciting. Against, and this is like, I mean, this is a Ravens, you know, game that they need to, like, handle. You know, like they need oh. I think Baker Mayfield, by the way, is starting. That's exciting. I'm excited to see that too. Honestly, Baker yeah. playing his former in division rival, um, yeah. and uh, you know, so you get to see some Baker Mayfield. You get to see some Lamar. So yeah, we're we're gonna need to see some live updates from you in that one. Absolutely. Um, Browns at Bills. Uh, I'm gonna go Bills here. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't go Bills here. Um, look, uh, they lost that Vikings team last week, but they're legit. They're very legit, that Vikings team. So, have you no ever seen a pissed off uh, Buffalo run? <laughs> I can't say I have, but I okay, right, right like, at like a, a just a helmet, just a, yeah, a like little turd. Just Google, elf just thing. Google, like, just Google, like a stampede of Buffalo, sure, you know, and just like that. I like, I know that during the uh, during the games, at least when I went to I went to a Bills quote unquote home, home game when they played at Ford Field and one of the things they did to kind of try to make it more of a home environment is they do like this every, every um, big down they have like on the big screen. It's just like these Buffalo just storming. There you go. Yeah. Is that, is that what you like, want to see? Yeah. So that's just, I think that's what you're going to see. And if I was holding the camera getting trampled by these animals, that's what's going to happen this week. Right. to Cleveland. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So um, that is, uh, and they play that on the big screen all the time, and they and they have like these loud noises, and people just go nuts. So at Buffalo, you're gonna get a pissed off Josh Allen, a pissed off team. Um, Cleveland is in trouble. Um, I, I appreciate the the description, the imagery, all of it. Um, <laughs> Commanders at other horned cow type animal team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't know if you get the same um effect I, there i don't yeah I, I don't really feel stampede vibes with this one um i'm gonna go commanders here but man a part of me wants to take the texans i think they're gonna keep it close um you know but i'm gonna go commanders here just based off of uh heineke swagger uh the past couple of weeks i'm gonna go texans i'm gonna go texans i, like it. I think i they're due they're due and you know, what better team to beat than Washington, who's kind of getting hot and I think he's getting a little bit of an ego, right? Slugging mm-hmm. bush lattes on the on a plane on the way back. It's time. Houston I like deserves it. Houston deserves one. They've like been it. in every game. Um Eagles at Colts. I'm gonna go Eagles here. Yes, they lost, but I'm gonna, you know, this is still bad Eagles team. Um, and if Jeff Saturday somehow pulls this one out, then I am going to take back literally everything I still said about the head coaching pick last week. Just period. You kind of like, have I, to. This, yeah. is, this would be an I, unbelievable. It would be insane. Very impressive win. I'm going to go with the Eagles as well. It's, you know, listen, really good teams rarely lose back-to-back games. And I know I've said this with the Bills and then it happened. But really good teams, it's tough to, you know, lose back-to-back games. So I'm going to go with the Eagles. Jets at Pats. Man, this is tough because the Pats really took care of business uh, the first time that they met. I think the Jets are going to be out for some revenge, and I think they know that they got the division, maintaining that division dominance on the line. So I think I'm going to go Jets here. I'm going to actually go Patriots here. Um, They seem to have their number. You know, Bill Belichick seems to have their number. And this is in New England, probably cold game, maybe a little snow. Um, this is just seems like in Foxborough, like what New England wants, right? This is the kind of division game they want. And this could, you know, spice up the division here with, with the New England win. So I'm going to go with the, the Patriots. For sure. Um, Rams at Saints. Uh, look, I'm ready to be heard again. I'm going Saints. Um, I think that this Rams team is not good. And I think that the Saints defense will be able to make it happen. And hopefully Andy Dalton just doesn't do a bunch of stupid things to lose us the game. And so that's kind of you better I'm hope at. you better hope the Saints win at home without Cooper Cup. And I don't know if Stafford's playing or not, but where's their offense? Exactly. That's what that and that's like where's if, this Rams if, offense? If the <laughs> Saints don't win this game, I mean you should be really, really concerned. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. So I'm gonna pick the Saints as well. And you know, I feel pretty good about saying that because if they don't win this game, I'm gonna have to like call up and check on you. Yeah, hey, uh, I'll I'll be very upset. So many one o'clock. Like we're not even out of the one o'clock games yet. And uh, you know, the one o'clock Super Bowl right here, uh Lions at Giants. Uh, I'm gonna go Giants, like unfortunately. I, I do not think this is one that is in the card for the Lions, but I am excited to watch it happen, and I think that it is a good test for um, just how this, you know, kind of refurbished Lions defense can really handle some some good productive offenses. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Giants. I'm going to take the Giants as well. You know, and this is interesting for la- last week's guest, Khalil Templeton, you know, playing the team that cut him. Um, you know, he obviously learned that offense and had relationships with all those guys. And when I'll be on the other sideline, it, that's part of the interesting thing that happens in the league with kind of the turnover that happens where you get cut and you're on a team that could play against that team, you know, just overnight. So interesting to see. I'm sure he'll have a lot of different mixed emotions going into that one, but I'm going to go with the Giants as well. And like you said, this is a tough, tough matchup to go into for Detroit coming off of two wins. You really think that this team can win three games in a row. We'll find out, but New York has looked good all year and they do, um, enough in the running game. I think it's just going to be tough for Detroit to defensively figure them out. I agree. Um, Raiders at Broncos. Oh, 
I, I'm going to go Raiders here just because of my disdain for this Broncos team. And like I said, they're equally as crummy teams, but for whatever reason, I prefer the Raiders and we don't really uh, target them, them and hate it, hate on them. And we always give them the benefit of the doubt. And the Broncos can do absolutely nothing right in our eyes, and they are kind this of is, this is the child, this is the so. fight for this is the fight for not coming in last place. You know? <laughs> Literally, um, I'm gonna go Denver. Actually, I think that that defense, you know, we we hate on them so much, but you're right. Like we have to give that defense some credit. They're playing well enough to keep their this team in every game, even as bad as this offense has been. And the Raiders' offense, when they go against tough defenses, has struggled. And they struggled the first time around. Um, so I'm going to go with Denver. And I'm just waiting for Russell Wilson to have one of these like big games because I feel like he's still very capable of doing that at any moment. And we just haven't seen it yet. And the second that it happens, you know, he's going to just act like the biggest douche and just, you know, say, hey, you know, everyone was hating on unlimited, me. Unlimited, like, let's ride. I'm unlimited. Like, right. you really think yeah. I was going to be bad all year? You're just waiting for this moment. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, um, and it's, eventually it's going to happen. He's going to have a big game eventually. Speaking of like just, you know, weird personas that are, you know, way too egotistical, uh, Cowboys at Vikings, I think the Cowboys need to get humbled. And, you know, this is kind of that part of the season where they start showing their weaknesses to better teams um, so that they, you know, lose a little bit of that that playoff capital that they had going for them. And, uh, you know, we'll make the wild card and then lose that game like they do every season. So I'm going to go Vikings here. I actually think Dallas gets this one done, John. All right. I think think Dallas, um, you know, if their defense cleans it up a little bit and plays to the standard that they played in almost all of their games, I know we didn't see it a little bit against Aaron Rodgers, but that's a tough matchup for Kirk Cousins who – wait, what time is this game at? Yeah, no, no, I'm picking Dallas. This isn't a one o'clock game. <laughs> it's, it's not a one o'clock game. <laughs> the noon monster. The noon monster is, you know, listen. The noon. Fair you know, point. Like, Fair point. You know, Absolutely. This is what they're starting to call them. They're starting to call them the noon nightmare. That's what they're starting to call Kirk Cousins. Even though the games are at one o'clock, Mark. Correct. Okay. You know, but it, I don't, don't, don't mean to rain on your parade a little bit. That's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm just hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what they're starting to call them. Dude's tough to beat at the uh, one o'clock kickoff, which I know isn't actually noon, but it sounds better. One o'clock nightmare doesn't sound the same. He's in the um, building by noon. I'll give you. I'll he's, give the, you. he's for sure. Yeah, he's ready to go by noon. You know, uh, I'm gonna pick Dallas. I'm gonna pick Dallas, dude. A tough matchup, defensive line against Kirk Cousins, who will make some stupid decisions. I think they'll have Diggs line up on Jefferson a lot. He'll guess, but you know, whatever. They're good. the Vikings will score points. I just think Dallas will create a few turnovers and also score points. I think they'll score a few more than Minnesota who's coming off of a very big win, maybe a little bit hungover still after beating Buffalo. Bengals at Steelers. I got to go Bengals here. I got to go Bengals as well. Um, You know, in that division, this is a, this is kind of a must win for Cincinnati. You know, if they want to really compete with, you know, Baltimore and stay atop and have a chance, like I'm going to go Cincinnati as well. Steelers, TJ Watts back though, which causes problems. It does. Um, but Fitzpatrick is not, so you know. Um, and then Chiefs at Chargers. I'm gonna go Chargers here. Uh this game is always good. Every single time that these two teams meet, it's always an exciting it's game. It's always electric. I'm act- I'm gonna go the Chiefs um in this one. It's just you know, the Chargers aren't healthy enough yet to compete with the Chiefs team. You know, I know the first time around we saw like the Chargers kind of dominate the gameplay for most of the game and the Chiefs were able to somehow still win. That, that was well, that was the game that uh Herbert cracked his ribs in, right? And like and it looked almost, like the Chargers game until that yeah. kind of happened, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. So but um, I'm gonna go with Kansas City um to get that one done. Exciting game, regardless. And then we got 49ers at another division rival, Cardinals, for Monday Night Football. And to me, no brainer, 49ers. Like, I'd, I'd be surprised to, to see them lose that game. So, um, yeah, I'm, I would be surprised as well. Um, that's the kind of game that might be so ugly that Cliff Kingsbury gets fired. Potentially. Potentially. I just, yeah, I think Shanahan's just the better coach in every way possible. So, that's this week. Um, you know, uh, last last week was really exciting. A lot of amazing games that, you know, 
got us talking. I'm sure this week we'll have plenty of those as well. Um, I'm really pumped about it. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, that is all for this week. Uh, hopefully we'll have some, some other big guests, potential NFL player guests in the coming weeks here. Um, if everything works out the way that it is, uh, this podcast has been a blessing. I think Mark and I are very thankful to have had the incredible talent that we've had um, so far on it. So hope, we hope to be bringing you more of that in the coming weeks as well. Hopefully it's, uh, it's always fun making, making uh, new episodes and it's even better when we're able to get some cool guys on. Uh, we've had awesome guests, whether they're players or, or just friends of the show, we've had, a lot of fun bringing these guys on and we will continue to uh, try to do that and, and provide some, some good content for people out there. And uh, we enjoy making it. And I hope people enjoy listening to it. Yes, sir. Until next week. Peace. See you guys.